ouch. Where is Christianity on your list? Other than the little hint that I gave you before I spoke of you are a child of God, where is Christianity on your list? Can I have, can I, no, you, no, 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 it's self-reflection. You're not going to grade people, Luke, sit down. Oh, my goodness. Can I have me back? Am I back? I'm back. There we go. So where is Christianity on your list? I have some rhetorical questions. Max, that means don't yell at the answers. What have you allowed to define who you are? No. It's self-reflection. It's for you. If Christianity isn't, isn't on the top of your list, why not? What have you allowed to become more important than God in your life? Why does that matter? Does your Christianity matter and guide you in everything that you do? What do you show to the world? What is your self-worth based on? Things that matter or things that don't? And if you lost it all like Coach Harrison did, what would you still have? And I want you to be kind to yourself because I did some very unscientific research. As somebody who's been taught how to properly research, this was very unscientific. I asked a whole bunch of people, who are you? And the top two responses were job and marital slash parental status. Coach, coach Harrison, I'm a basketball coach. I'm a married man with two kids. And that was most of what people said to me. Christian people, non-Christian people, except for single people who were slightly more philosophical. Go, Leah. Woohoo. I, I didn't ask Leah, but single people were slightly more philosophical. You're human. Oh, see? Leah's a little bit more philosophical. But that was that's what most people have as defining them. The first two things: employment and marital slash parental status. So we need our third story. This is Hannah. And as a teacher, I would define her as a lost child. Both of her parents have died to drugs and alcohol. She lives with grandma. She's acting out because A, both of her parents have died of drugs and alcohol and she lives with grandma. And also B, she's a teenager. And that behaviour has had her expelled from school. She is now in this new school. She wants to run cross country, but she's got asthma. So everything she tries to do there are mountains in front of her. Now, the lady down the bottom is the principal of the school, Principal Brooks, who was a friend of her mother's, Hannah's mother. And she sees her struggle and she talks to her about God being this perfect father in her life who will never leave her, who loves her no matter what, but her sins hurt God's heart. The sign for sin is this. It's a hook, which is like an S, and it breaks your heart in two. Thanks, thanks she tells Hannah to read Ephesians 1 and 2 which is what this basically what this whole movie is based on Ephesians 1 and 2 and Hannah does this and she writes down I am and every time she receives a word in Ephesians 1 and 2 I am loved I am chosen I am and I encourage you to do this because it made me cry doing it doesn't take much to make me cry. But if you read Ephesians 1 and 2 and you write I am statements, it will change who you are or it'll change your self-image of yourself. Because sometimes what goes on in our head, the narrative we tell ourselves is way harsher than anything anybody would ever say to us in person or online. And that's saying something. And I've always said, if you want a simple answer to a hard question, because the who are you question is quite difficult, you ask a child. Coach Harrison might have struggled with that question. We might have struggled with that question. But Hannah's got it covered. Please, Ken. You can get your things together. The bell should ring in about three minutes.
Anna, are you okay? Ask me who I am. Ask me who I am. Who is Hannah Scott? I am created by God. He designed me. So I'm not a mistake. His son died for me. Just so I could be forgiven. He picked me to be his own. So I'm chosen. He redeemed me. So I am wanted. He showed me grace just so I could be saved. He has a future for me because he loves me. So I don't wonder anymore, Coach Harrison. I am a child of God. I just wanted you to know. man behind with the big eyes is the drama teacher who was like why isn't she in my class she's amazing but that's a wow moment right it kind of is when I read it it was kind of like inspiring and healing and reassuring to hear some of those things because God doesn't just say that about Hannah he says it about you too and it's Ephesians 1 and 2 if you want to go read it what does God ask for us in return though for all those things he asks for us to love him, to worship him, to obey him. He doesn't ask for big things, even though, you know, Ken read in the mission news today, it's hard to be an Adventist. It's not hard to be an Adventist if you love your creator. But Jesus gave us a task. God may just want love, but Jesus gave us a task. They need to move. There we go. Thank you, Ken. So Luke read this, Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. You got a job to do. As a follower of Christ, you have a job to do. If we are defined and led by our Christianity, what can we achieve? Hannah's, thanks, Max. He's heckling me, anything. Hannah's life was turned around and she made right some of the things that she had been doing. Some of the sins that she had committed, she made right. Coach Harrison changed his outlook and saw the blessings he had, not just what he had lost. And he became a new man with a plan. It just wasn't the old plan. What holds us back? Fear holds us back. No one wants to be labelled that religious nut. i got to tell you, I worked with one of those. She was so devout and she so wanted to spread the word of God, but her approach was a hindrance to the point where if people walked into the staff room and she was in there, they would heat up their lunch and eat elsewhere. If they were eating in there and she walked in with her lunch, they would pick up their meals and go and eat in their car. I've said it before, we need to ebb in like the tide and not to be a Mack truck. It's nobody you met, it was before you were born. <gasps> Life before Max and Luke. But fear holds us back because we don't want to be labelled like her. And if our approach is different, we won't be labelled like her. Yesterday, Letitia sent me a text message encouraging me for today because, you know, I do want to, you know, have a little bit of a nervous we right now because I'm a bit scared. But... She sent me this passage and I said to her, that's perfect, I'm going to put it in. So it says, so do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. 
I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Thanks, Krishna. Just what I needed. God's got your back. The Holy Spirit's got your back. Jesus has got your back, even though it's really scary. So I want to tell you a story, and the hecklers are going to shush. But I need to give you some behave. I need to give you some background. I was working at Kempsey Adventist School, and they sat us all down and they said to us, the general population of this area is increasing, but the child age population is decreasing. So basically, if you want to keep your job, we have to accept anybody who applies to the school, which in theory is great. But we had probably a third of our class had some sort of diagnosis. We had major behavioral issues and we had no additional aid time. So by week 10 Wednesday, which is when this story occurred, all of the teachers were exhausted physically, mentally, spiritually. We were just gone. And then, of course, because it's a Wednesday, it's a staff meeting day. Yay. And then on top of that, my maths lesson that day had spectacularly flopped. Not just slightly bad, it was a complete disaster. 